Hello. This evening I wanted to discuss the unseen poetry. Now what I found with people coming to me before the mock exams began was that a lot of the time unseen poetry is not given an awful lot of airtime, so to speak, in schools. Um, and that's obviously because there's such a huge amount of syllabus to cover that it's not always possible to give everything at the same level of importance. But I would like to discuss the unseen poetry um, and I'll explain why. Essentially, you are given three hours and 20 minutes to cover your paper two. That leaves you with um, give or take 60 minutes for your single text, 65 minutes for your comparative studies, 50, five zero minutes for your studied poetry and 15 minutes for your unseen. So many people fall into the trap of saying it's only 15 minutes. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things if I answer this or not, because a lot of the time people aren't very effective or strict with themselves with regard to time management. I am here to urge you, um, whether you're starting your mocks last Monday, whether you're starting them tomorrow, the unseen poetry is extraordinarily important to your paper too. All of your questions are extraordinarily important and none of them can afford to be left out, which is why your time management is of utmost importance. It is better for you to be able to try every question than to complete two questions very well and not complete the other two. So the unseen poetry is only 15 minutes. It's worth 20 marks and it is very, very achievable to um, succeed in at least 10 to 12 out of those 20 marks, if not 15 or 16. Um, I'm going to look at a certain example here. Now, I love to dip in and out of the exam papers when I do look at unseen poems because I love to look at what's come up over the last number of years. What you will find is that the unseen poetry may not grab you or engage you as much as your studied poetry has. And it's a very obvious reason. You haven't studied the background of this poet. You don't know their motivations. You don't know what has caused them to be inspired to write this particular piece of writing. And so it can be very hard to pull that out of the bag on the day and have it written in 15 minutes. So what I advise between now and June is to cover as many unseen poems as you can. The more you read, the more you allow your mind to consider the possibilities of what's being discussed, you'll find that you will speed up um, how fast it takes you to get from reading it to determining what you think it may be about. And the beauty about the unseen poem is that you actually can't be wrong. You haven't studied this. I haven't studied it. We will all have a different view on the subject matter of the poem. We will all have a different interpretation and a different experience. And that's wonderful. It's my favourite part of correcting when I correct the exam papers in that you really get a chance to see inside the mind of a student and you don't necessarily get to see that um, when you correct things like the single text or the comparative studies. The unseen poetry is something is in there that inspires memories for you. Something is in there that conjures up images of people or memories or situations or scenarios in your world and that's a very, very special thing. I'd like you to listen to this particular poem. Um, it is written by the poet Rosita Boland and it's called Butterflies. In Bosnia, there are landmines decorated with butterflies and left on the grassy pathways of rural villages. The children come quivering down familiar lanes and fields. Hands outstretched, they reach triumphant for these bright, elusive insects themselves becoming winged in the act, gaudy and ephemeral. The first thing you do is you read your title. The title for this poem is called Butterflies. Butterflies conjures up an image of freedom. Butterflies conjures up an image of colours, a uh, summertime, beautiful, soft wings, baby's breath almost. That is your initial impression from reading the title. In Bosnia, bang, setting, associated, if you're that way uh, inclined historically and you've paid attention to your news headlines, Bosnia is associated with war, uh, with poverty. In Bosnia, there are landmines. What a negative opening line. Decorated with butterflies. Contrast, you've landmines which are cruel and have the ability to take life and represent war. 
but they're decorated with butterflies, suggesting that something has happened to allow them to become approachable, to allow them to become decorated and almost a celebrated part of the landscape. They're left on the grassy pathways of rural villages. At first reading, you may see that that is a positive thing because the descriptions are grassy pathways and the villages are rural villages. These are small, non-populated, pretty areas decorated with butterflies. However, if you stop and think about this, if the pathways are grassy, that suggests that they have not been travelled upon in some time. If they're the grassy pathways of rural villages, they are separated from the remainder of society. Certain elements associated with war may have been forgotten. So you have grassy pathways in rural villages where there are landmines decorated with butterflies. The setting used in that opening paragraph, that opening stanza rather, is incredibly strong. The children come. Oh, the sense of foreboding in those three lines, the children come and you can see it in front of you. You can see the grassy pathways, the rural villages, the landmines decorated with butterflies and the children are coming down those grassy pathways. The children come quivering down, shaking, quivering, reminiscent of the movement that a butterfly makes, also associated with um, fear. The children come quivering down familiar lanes and fields. They're so used to doing this that they don't think anything of it. Hands outstretched, they reach triumphant for these bright, elusive insects. They're triumphant because to catch one of these elusive insects that are so notoriously difficult to catch would be a personal achievement for them. And they run, hands outstretched, to catch a butterfly, themselves becoming winged in the act, gaudy and ephemeral. To be ephemeral is to be temporary, to be elusive yourself almost. The children reach for the butterflies which are decorated on the landmines and in doing so they themselves become winged in the act, gaudy with colour and temporary ephemeral. This highlights the reality of war. In such a short poem an enormously important punch has been packed. Now I love to teach this poem. I know this poem very, very well, but I only know my own interpretation of this poem. I have never actually looked up the logic behind this poem to see if I'm wrong or right in my determination of what it's about. And that's absolutely fine because it's what I see. And that's what unseen poetry is about. It's what you see, what you connect with and what you visualize based on the language and techniques used by the poet. So never run when you see the unseen poetry question, because it doesn't matter if you have never studied this poem before, if you've never read it before. What's important is that you see the title and you allow yourself to visualize something. Let that guide you through the poem because you can either prove it or disprove that. Look at the contrast between, for example, the negativities of war associated with a landmine and the freedom and beauty associated with butterflies. That contrast is of utmost importance in allowing you to form an understanding of this poem. The innocence of children as they are quivering, that almost unconscious fear associated with war and the what ifs of war. Hands outstretched, reaching triumphant, for these bright, elusive insects. That descriptive language is almost euphoric in its wording. They are triumphant. The butterflies are bright and elusive. You don't have to be a wordsmith to understand words when they are put in this context. On their own, you may not be able to say, I know hand on heart what that means, but when it's put in the context, I promise you, things become clear. What you do need to know when you look at the unseen poem is it doesn't matter whether you're hitting the nail on the head in terms of the subject matter or not. What is important is that you understand your poetic techniques. For example, theme, your tone, your metaphor, your simile. Um, understand the importance of language. When it's descriptive and specific, what effect does that have on you? When the language is accessible and easy to understand, does it improve your reading experience overall? Um, you look at the the imagery that's brought about, you look at the length of the stanzas, the structure, is there one line on its own? You look at what's happening there. To do that, 
puts you in a very strong position to be able to read the poem and begin to identify certain things. So if you read this, those butterflies, you stop and you think, what do they represent? Do they represent nature? Of course they do. But they represent freedom. They represent choice. They represent beauty. They represent colour. They represent all of the things that were denied to those people who were affected by war and these landmines in Bosnia. And they represent the freedom that is now going to be denied to these children and their families as they become winged in the act. It's stunningly powerful. Some of your unseen poetry will be a little bit more difficult to interpret, but you must trust yourself. You will have five friends sitting in a row and all of you could answer the exact same question on the exact same poem and not one of you will have the same answer. And that's the true beauty. That is where you come to shine as a student. You don't have to have all the knowledge in the world of poetry. You don't even have to have a genuine love for poetry because obviously not every student does. But what you do need to have is a sincere respect for yourself. If you respect your understanding, if you respect the images that are conjured up in your mind, you mightn't be sure why you're seeing these things after reading a poem, but allow yourself to understand what you are seeing. If you do, that's half the battle. You'll say, yes, this is what I think it's about because this is what I can see in my head. And then you think, what techniques are being used that allowed me to see this? It won't be one thing. It won't be two things. It will be many, many things all put together to deliver that final impact to you, the reader. So please, 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 when you are covering your mocks, covering your leaving cert, covering any exam papers or sample papers between now and then, treat the unseen poetry with the respect that it deserves. The poetry is beautiful. You will never be given a poem that is not jam-packed with poetic techniques because it is the only way that you can truly proceed in determining the impact that the study of this poem had on you. If you have any questions on the unseen poem, please do contact me. But what I would advise between now and June is to go through your version of the exam papers or often in the back of your studied poetry books, you'll have a section for the unseen poetry. What I would do is I would read through as many poems as you can, giving yourself a certain time limit to try and speed up the comprehension of that poem. You'll always have um, the layout here, 10 and 10, or you will have a full 20 marker. Uh, it depends on you as a student to which question that you go for. I generally tend to teach the 20 marker because for the simple reason that the question tends not to vary in its structure and its style. You are being asked for a personal response to this poem and that personal response should tackle the impact that the 